In this video, I want to talk about the fibrous skeleton of the heart and also the arrangement of the muscle fibers of the heart and how that impacts ejection of blood from the ventricles. And then I'm going to touch briefly on the two different types of cells of the heart and the electrical conduction system, which we will elaborate on in detail in a subsequent video. So what we're looking at right here is a simplistic image of the fiber skeleton of the heart, which is composed of dense connective tissue. And it has a number of purposes, one of which is to provide stru structural integrity to the heart. It also is dividing the chambers of the heart, that is the atria from each other, creating an interatrial septum, which you don't necessarily see in this image. It also creates separation between the ventricles, and that would be the interventricular septum, which is indicated right here. And that it also provides some fibrous rings that maintain some support and integrity of the valves and the direction blood is going to flow through the heart, such as the aortic ring right here, which is going to provide support for the aortic semilunar valve, or at least the entrance and base of the aorta. This would be the pulmonary ring for the pulmonary artery. This right here would be the bicuspid ring for the mitral valve or the left atrioventricular valve. And lastly, this would be the ring for the tricuspid valve known as the tricuspid ring. Once again, this fiber skeleton is providing support for the heart. And the fiber skeleton is also providing points of attachment for cardiac cells, myocardial cells, cells of the heart muscle. Keep in mind with skeletal muscle fibers, also known as skeletal muscle cells, those cells are attaching to bone of the skeleton, but we don't have bone within the heart. So this fibrous skeleton is providing attachment points for myocardial cells. Now, to be clear, there are two types of cells that make up the myocardium. We have myocardial contractile cells, which I tend to abbreviate as MCCs just for simplicity. And we have myocardial autorhythmic cells. And I'm going to outline or detail the function of the autorhythmic cells in a subsequent video. But these cells are going to be excitable cells. These are cells that spontaneously depolarize and repolarize without the input of nervous stimuli. Now, to be clear, I'm not suggesting there never is nervous stimuli, but they can depolarize and repolarize on their own without any hormonal or neurotransmitters initiating that excitation of those cells. So we have myocardial contractile cells, which are responsible for the pumping action of the heart. And we have myocardial autorhythmic cells that are responsible for setting the rhythm of the heart. That is the heart rate. And then back to the fiber skeleton, the fiber skeleton also controls that electrical conduction. So the electrical conduction, once again, is the excitation of the individual myocardial autorhythmic cells. But as we learned about circulation or flow of blood through the heart, we don't want that excitation happening in a random fashion. We want it happening in a directional fashion. So blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle, out the pulmonary artery, back to the left atrium and into the left ventricle and then out the aorta. So the fiber skeleton is controlling the directional electrical activity of the heart. And we'll talk about this in detail, but we don't want necessarily the excitation to move from the right atria to the right ventricle in one fell swoop. We want there to be a delay and we'll talk about that, but the fiber skeleton is going to help achieve the directional nature of the excitability of the myocardium. Now let's just take a now let's just take a brief look at the myocardium, specifically of the left ventricle. This is meant to depict the myocardium of the left ventricle. And what it's really showing, this is representing the aortic semilunar valve. This would be the mitral valve. 
between the left atrium and the left ventricle. All of this would be the heart muscle of the left ventricle. And really what this is trying to show is that there's a rotational vortex that results from the pumping action of the heart. The pumping action of the ventricles is like wringing out a towel to push blood superiorly up the aortic semilunar valve or through the se aortic semilunar valve into the aorta. So it's not just caving in of the walls of the left ventricle or right ventricle, if you will, but it's more of a twisting action or a myocardial vortex. Okay, that's it for this video. More to come.